Hey, my friend, welcome back to She Speaks Life. I hope this podcast has been bringing you life-giving content on how us women get through our difficulties with God and how to celebrate with the Lord as he gives us those victories into our lives. This is our last episode of this amazing season, and I will be bringing you a brand new season with, again, a lineup of incredible guests, and I'm super excited because I will be sharing with you this project that the Lord has downloaded on my heart and I am going to announce some new things that we're going to be doing on this podcast to just take She Speaks Life to another level. So stay tuned. For today, I have with me author Carrie Eichberger. She dives right into sharing with us all about how to unlearn the unhealthy patterns of worry and how to surrender and overcome them with God's power. Some important key points that we talk about here are where does the battle of worry come from, identifying worry, and how to uproot, unload, and unshackle worry, along with how to use those spiritual weapons to conquer worry. Her book is absolutely fantastic. It's called Win Over Worry, Conquer What Shakes You and Soar with the One Who Overcomes. And you can win a copy of this book by simply entering on my social media posts, both on Instagram and YouTube are the ones I use and I don't make it complicated. All you have to do is hit subscribe and let me know in the comments that you want to be entered in the giveaway. All right, let's get equipped and let's dive into this powerful conversation that I have with Carrie Eichberger. Hey, Carrie, welcome to She Speaks Life. I am so excited you are here. You have a book that is coming out. It's called Win Over Worry. Hello, a topic that we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. And the subtitle is called Conquer What Shakes You and Soar with the One Who Overcomes. And that in itself is so inspiring. And I'd love for you to share your message. But before we do, I always love to kick us off with the guests sharing their favorite scripture verse. Well, absolutely. And first of all, thank you, Jamie, for having me. Um, it's always a pleasure to get on and talk to someone about worry and all our, and my, what I have struggled with. And I know many people um, can yeah. relate to that as well. And, you know, my life verse comes from this place of worry for me, um, because that's something that I have always struggled with so much. And, and I'm, I'm able to see it in woven through all of my days and most of my moments. And mm-hmm. it is the verse that most everyone is familiar with and you've heard it over and over, but it's just, it's, it's what it speaks to me. And I'll explain that, but it's Romans eight twenty eight, Um, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And Mm -hmm. this verse, it, it, to me, and in all that I face, all of my struggles, when I can really understand that God is working in no, and no matter what it is um, that I'm facing or what is before Mm -hmm. me, and I can understand that he's working it for good um, just because I love him. Like that's it. And that he's working all things for good. And according to his purpose, it relieves so much of that worry and so much yeah. of um, anything that I'm sort of suffering through or not understanding or doesn't make sense to me, uh, concerns for the future, um, you know, uncertainty just in my, in my current moments or of the past, things of the past. So I just, mm-hmm. I've, lo- I've always loved that verse. And um, every time I read it, it means something different to me based on what I'm experiencing. So also mm-hmm. I'll say there's a lot of verses, you know, depending on what we're going through in our life, there's always something else. And just most recently I have fallen in love with um, Zephaniah three seventeen, which says the Lord, your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mentioned the other verse being one, like that's something I just, no matter what I'm going through, I can I infuse that. Well, 
recently I felt I was encountering some a little bit more unsettling circumstances. I was traveling to Colorado and I don't really love to fly and I get into that in my book. <laughs> That's a whole story in itself. But um, I also encountered some other circumstances that felt, let's just say, not so safe, a little dangerous, even as we're hiking up, not, not hiking, there was a bus hiking up this mountain, very steep, or like looking over cliffs. Everyone thought they were going to mm. die. I'm not kidding. It was, it was a very, <laughs> one of those moments Sounds when scary. you're like, Heights. You, you yeah. feel very scary. Yeah. And, um, and I had, that verse had been one that right when I took off on the airplane, taking off to Colorado, I had been repeating that in my head, that the Lord, your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. And that to me was just reminding me that no matter where I am, what I'm going through, God is with me mm-hmm. and the mighty warrior that he is, he is sovereign. He is powerful. He is mighty. Mm-hmm. And when you can have confidence that he, he is your protector. He's that, the protection that we need. And he is watching out for us, always with us. There's just so much comfort, I find, in that. And so that's kind of like a, a new favorite. So I've got sort of like the oldie but goodie. Um, yeah. But that's kind of a new, fresh one that's been that really speaking to me. Mm, I love both of those verses. So great. Yeah. And, you know, there's something about that worry And it's just kind of that knee-jerk reaction that our brain goes to. And I love how you're going to talk about how to unlearn that, right? Those unhealthy patterns of worry and how we can surrender and overcome them over to the Lord and um, the steps we can take. But, you know, first, I'd love for you to just dive into your story as to why worry is um why worry was a struggle for you mm-hmm. and why write this message so you said it worry was a struggle for me and i think many people can relate some i think you'll you might find that worry is either been only a certain part of your past or maybe you never were really a worrier and now you're finding it creep up into your life uh, it was something that was kind of a constant for me but at starting at a certain age. And so when I start decided to start writing this, well, I'll tell you, I really wasn't so sure I wanted to write this, write about worry. And the reason I decided to was because I really wanted to meet my audience where they were. I wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. And I, I asked, I did an online poll and I asked my audience what they struggled with. And I gave them a little multiple choice. Like you have four options. And and Mm -hmm. I chose that as one. I hope that they wouldn't say was it. And sure enough, that was like the number one thing people said they struggled with and could use some help and resolution with. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, someone once told me if I was one step ahead of somebody, I can help them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, all right, God, I can, I can do this. I really could see how, yes, I was a so-called worrier, but I had seen God redeem a lot of my struggle and, um, and show up and relieve a lot of that as I had grown in my faith and, in solidifying that foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, because that's what people were asking for and I decided I would give it a shot. And I also felt like, you know, when you've been there, you can relate to someone. Not ever, you know, sometimes you don't want someone to give you advice. They've never been there. And I could say, I mm-hmm. people want someone they can relate to. And, and I've walked that, I've walked that path. I'm still walking it. Mm-hmm. And I want to, you know, I'm offering to hold hands with the, the the person who's struggling and say, we can do this together. I'll show you how with God's help. We certainly can. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it started off when I was in high school, really Basically, I was, you talked about unhealthy coping and that's where it all began. It was like my will over God's will and way. And Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was doing that at the time. I didn't realize what I was creating in my life. But as I was doing that, as I was like dealing with, you know, struggles, as you, as you encounter life, you encounter more struggle, more pain, more um, difficulty, you, you, whether it's something you experience or you watch somebody else endure. Mm-hmm. And we develop these rea- you know, reactions, like you said, how are we going to cope? How are we going to deal with it? And it was, all, I did it my way. I knew a God that loved me and I was, I grew up in a Christian home, but you know, we don't always live like we believe what we say we believe. And that was sort of, that was me. I think a lot of us do that. And um, so I continued to walk through life and it only, it works for a while until it doesn't. So I was, Mm -hmm. I was 
living this life and I was trying to find fulfillment, all the wrong things. And I was putting band-aids on my struggles and I was developing um I, more worry would, would surface. So I was, I found myself avoiding life and trying to control my circumstances mm-hmm. um, and living anxiously. And mm-hmm. it, it starts to snowball. If you really don't get a hold of it and figure mm-hmm. out what's at the root of all that and why mm-hmm. you're, uh, and, and really then turn it over to God, it mm-hmm. snowballs. And that's what happened. It snowballed for me and turned into full blown anxiety, full blown fear. Um, and it really hit a peak in college when 9-11 hit and I started having some panic attacks. It went into like lasted for days, mm-hmm. um, had to seek medical attention for it. And that was like my red flag moment that, Carrie, you've got to do something about this. And mm-hmm. that was like this whole beginning of a journey of walking closer with the Lord. And it's been such a beautiful mm-hmm. experience. There's so much in that. And um, that's just such a, you know, a journey in itself of, of some ups and downs. But uh, I can truly say I've, I have walked that path. I have struggled with worry. I have come so far. God has shown me how to, that he can overcome this thing. So mm-hmm. I know that many people like myself believe that's just the way that they are. Mm-hmm. And that was the, what I thought. And I just had to learn to sort of deal with it. But God mm-hmm. has showed me that, you know, he, he has the power and we have the power within us because we have him to overcome and to, um, to yeah. overcome worry and to conquer, he conquers fear. Yeah, so true. And I look at worry as a futile attempt to control the uncontrollable, right? And it's yes. like, if we're trying to put it in our own hands, right, instead of giving it over to God's hands, that that leads us to this lack of control because we're trying to do it and we can't do it on our own strength and our own ability. We got to hand over because we can't control everything. So we have to hand it over to the Lord. And Absolutely. then that causes the uncertainties of our future, which then leads to this worry. And then if we let the, the worry, I always say worry is like the sibling of fear. Now yes. we're into the fear of everything. And we know that uh, fear and faith are in opposition, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. so we need God's word. That's why, you know, when we get closer to the Lord, we're, we're not, we're going and diving into his word and what he says. So we're feeding ourselves faith. And if we've got the faith, then then the fear has it dilutes, right? When we yes. when we fill ourselves with His Word, and 100%. so if God's not in the center of our lives, we're putting something else there in its place. We're gonna have a relationship with worry because we're not having a relationship with God on a daily basis. We're having right. a relationship with worry because we're relying on something else to take the center of our life. Yes. And we know those are the idols or distractions or, you know, the things that we're coming up, like you were saying, your own will and way yes. is what you were trying to rely on, which we can't. We got to rely on that perfect God that created yes. us and that mm-hmm. he sees from beginning to end, the big picture, everything. He's gone before us. He's with us. But we, for some reason, you know, we're human and worry just automatically comes first, which it shouldn't. <laughs> right? Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, I mean, you said it, you mentioned the word control and that's a big one for me, for a lot of us. And I really highlight this in the book that, um, that's something that, you know, we say we believe God's in control, but the way we live our lives sometimes looks like we think we're in control and that is a daily battle for me. And I know many Mm -hmm. people out there, they're listening. It's like, we, we, we try to manipulate our circumstances. We want to control our circumstances. And, and we think we can, but ultimately, like, no matter really what it is, God has the ultimate say. He can do whatever he wants with anything mm-hmm. that's in our circumstances and alter it um, for his good. So I think that's something that, and, and that's a really comforting thing. I mean, for me, mm-hmm. knowing that he's in control and knowing that he's good, it's those two things combined that he loves us, that he loves us, yeah. and that he's in control. Um, those mm-hmm. are just two. Those, those two truths are um, really 
critical and key in mm -hmm. tackling this beast of worry that yeah. God is in control and that he is mm -hmm. good. Because if we can believe with all of our hearts that he is sovereign and he has everything in his hands, every detail of our day and our lives in his hands, if we can really grasp that and we can grasp mm -hmm. how big or start to grasp how big his love is for us, um, yeah. then we can we really have nothing to worry about, you know, no easier said yeah. than done, but it's so true. We really, if mm -hmm. we can, if we can grasp those two things, then worry has no chance. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. I, I always say you first, you have to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And when you have a relationship with God, then you're going to know how much you are loved and valued by, mm -hmm. by God. He's constantly saying how much we are valued to him and how much mm -hmm. we are loved unconditionally by him. And I think that is key when we can actually get our roots into that and mm -hmm. really settle and rest in knowing no matter what God loves me, he values me. I once heard about uh, the word of God, it's like an insurance policy. Like once you know you're covered, like when you know you're, you've got car insurance, like you don't think about, you don't worry about it. You're just right. like, oh, okay, I, I'm insured, right? Like and that. it's like the word of God is like an insurance policy. It, we don't have to worry because God mm -hmm. has us covered. And so, so let's talk about identifying worry. Let, let's kind of go from the beginning of, you know, uncovering the enemy. Where, where would you like to start with that? So the really key thing here and really winning over worry is determining, well, what are you worried about first? Because a lot of times we don't even realize we're worrying mm -hmm. and, you know, it's there, or we might just notice, we know we have these fears in general, but they really manifest in, in a lot of as worry throughout our day. So for me, it's figuring out first, all right, let's lay out your worries, right? We go through a process, writing them all down. Let's lay it all out there. Let's get all the junk in front of you, all the worries that you have. And, and the reason I do that is because I think it's important to first look at what the problem is before we can do anything about resolving it. And that's kind of mm -hmm. with anything. But once we can identify what we're worried about, what the, what we really are after is what's at the root of that. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people know they have certain worries and we want to put little band-aids on those, those worries and, and try to just at the surface to dismantle them. And that can help temporarily, mm -hmm. but at the root of it, there's some fear mm -hmm. and, I, I really narrow it down to a, a couple of root fears that all of these worries are can tie back to. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna, I want to people to realize that there's fear. And when we realize it's fear, we can also say these fears are false. These are lies from the enemy. Yeah. So uncovering the true enemy is saying like, it's fear. And this is the enemy that is trying to speak these lies to your heart. And once you acknowledge that, sometimes just acknowledging that alone is enough for me to say, you know, out of here and right. I'm not going to fall yeah. for it. But mm -hmm. it's then taking those lies and covering that with the truths of God. So this is false or believing these. And there's a, I'll just go ahead and say the couple of fears that I narrow it down to are a fear of helplessness. And a fear mm -hmm. of being unworthy. So fear of, of unworthiness. So mm -hmm. and that's. You know, if you think about it, let's just throw out a, a worry that we have about, you know, a lot of us can relate to, fear, to worries about our kids. And I've got a son who's 16 and he's starting to drive now. And I worry <laughs> about him driving. Yeah. No. So I got this process of let's figuring out like, what's at the root of this really? What am I really worried about? And so if you ask yourself, why am I worried about that without going through the entire process and taking all your time, the, it really is. So I'm, I'm really worried about losing a child, um, mm -hmm. something happening to him. And right. well then pass that. What are you, what, why am I worried about that? And what you, because that just, you know, some people just stop right there and you've like, oh, that's a legitimate worry, right? Well, you know, yes, because anything can happen, but well, I'm worried about that because it's like, then what? You know, um, we don't always acknowledge that God's going to be there with us, even in those moments. But it's really a fear of, of helplessness and being like, we lose something and we can't even imagine ourselves sometimes being able to, to deal with life, to cope. What we're forgetting is that God is there. And because 
And the, the lie is that we're helpless because we're not ever helpless because we have God, because right. we always have him and he is always there. We are never helpless. And, and even though that doesn't take it away, um, take all of those big worries and fears away, when you can just apply that truth to that fear, mm -hmm. it has a lot of power to change the way that we see it and even yeah. the way that it, it shows up in our life. So that's just one, you know, the fear also of, of being unworthy. So a lot of times it's like, let's say we have, a, we have, we're worried about people, someone thinks about us, um, you know, or a so, so social situation or fear of rejection. Um, at the root of that, if you work through this process, we really are fearful of, um, being unloved and then being fe this fear of, of unworthiness. Well, that's also a lie because we are never mm -hmm. unworthy because God says, because God loves us and his, his love is perfect. We have value and worth because we are his children. We are children of the King and there is so much worth. And that's non-negotiable. We have, we are, we are sealed with um, as our identity in him. And, mm -hmm. and there's so many things that I go through and talk about in opening up those two ideas. But, and then there's a process of like taking that, we take this fear, bringing it to the light, exposing it for what it is as a lie, surrendering in it to God. Again, talking about control, surrendering it, that, that God is in control. We really ultimately have no say over what happens. Uh, ultimately, yeah. but then when we can just grasp these concepts, so I, we say that we believe God and we say that God loves us, but how do we, what does that look like in our life? We need to practice yeah. that. So I walk through mm -hmm. this process in the book of un, what's it look like to unleash peace and joy and purpose in the face of fear, um, all those things in mm -hmm. our identity and uh, who we are as his children. So there's, it's mm -hmm. it, again, it's a practicing piece and there's, I think that we need sometimes more, and there's a, a lot of it is in just learning scripture, like you said, but I'm also not one that's great at memorizing these, memorizing scripture. It has to be practiced. Mm -hmm. It really does. And the enemy wants yeah. us to forget. He wants us to forget the truth right. and forget those words. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably what's going on for me. Well, I can't remember them, but I can remember that God yeah. loves me. And I can remember that he is sovereign and he is in control. Yes, I know. Knowing God's word and taking what Jesus did and his example to make the enemy flee, he spoke out scripture three times for the enemy to, to, to flee when he was tempted in the wilderness. Yes. And so we can take that perfect example of speaking out the word. Sometimes, you know, it's not enough, like I'll read it, but there's something about like tangibly saying it out of your mouth and um, speaking it out into the atmosphere and, you know, having what Jesus did to make the enemy go away. And because that's exactly what the enemy is trying to do. We know that that the worry and fear is from uh, the enemy and um, we can stop it from from dwelling, you know, from taking that elevator from our mind into our hearts. Right. And yes. the way we can do that is take that thought captive with truth mm -hmm. and turn it around and cover it with God's word. And uh, I also um, you have a chapter on prayer, lifting, unloading it, lifting it mm -hmm. up in prayer. And I love that because just like you, I've had three teenagers going through the whole driving process and um, it does get easier after the first, <laughs> okay, uh, but there's always, um, I, I get that. I get the root of that fear, not wanting to lose a child, not wanting them to get in an accident. And uh, when I got to that place, I immediately went into prayer because the prayer and the power in that. And it wasn't just protecting my child, but keep like the choices of the others on the road away, like the poor choices away from my children. Right. Yes. And so it, and it, and after you're praying that you, you feel like you're just, you have the supernatural circle of the shield around them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oftentimes when I go into that worry and fear, it's because I'm lacking my prayer life. Yes. I'm lacking being in the word. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's the last thing that sometimes we do because we're trying to like come up with a solution ourselves, you know, right. and, and really all we need to do is 
take it out of our hands into the Lord's hands and uh, just give them all our concerns. Uh, the scripture verse in Philippians 4, 6, you know, yes. with everything, prayer and thanksgiving. And uh, I find that just extremely beneficial when it comes to worry. I think yes. with everything, but when we're talking about worry, it's mm -hmm. kind of an instant remedy for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, you know, something occurred to me. Um, so I wrote this chapter about prayer, like you said, and my first thought was, okay, people are going to think, all right, really a chapter about prayer. Of course, we're supposed to pray when we worry. And But it was something that I really picked up on in this was the, this idea that, okay, not to call people out, but we can do, I can do so much better with this. And I don't know how, how many of the listeners are familiar with the, the instruction in the Bible to pray continually. So I took those two words or pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Like, do we really do that? No, we pray. We might pray a lot even, but are we really pr praying continuously? And so even though that seems unrealistic, you know, unless we're like, you know, nuns to be praying nonstop, it's a goal. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you when for me, and I'm sure many can relate, when I pray, I immediately, like you said, the supernatural sense surrounds you, immediately sense more peace. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I'm praying about or in that moment, and it may not mm -hmm. go away completely, but it does, it does have the power to put more peace over the situation. So immediately yeah. my perspective shifts and there mm -hmm. is less worry. Now, mm -hmm. I think the more the probably, so to me, it's like, oh, well, if we could just pray all the time, wouldn't that be so much better? So I really go through some practical ways we can incorporate more prayer and it's just conversation with God. You know, we all yeah. under, heard people say, start your day with prayer. And I do that as well, but it, I can, I can pray and walk out the door and two seconds later, something smacks me in the face that has me all worried again sure. or flustered or angry or whatever it might be. Yeah. And it's, I need to really put those touch points throughout my day of, of praying and talking to God. And sometimes that just mm -hmm. looks like worshiping their music. Um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely continuing to, to pray over meals and, um, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's finding ways to continue to do that throughout your day and, and practicing. That's just, the, that's a key for a lot of these things is just making a habit of it and practicing yeah. it more and more. And, and that's just one component mm -hmm. of overcoming this and relearning how mm -hmm. to, 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 co to cope the right way with God. And that's talking mm -hmm. to him about it, but mm -hmm. it's doing it, um, making that your go-to, making prayer yeah. your go-to when you, immediately when something, mm -hmm. when whenever that trigger happens. Um, like for me recently, when I was flying, mm -hmm. as much as I have never, I haven't liked to fly, I've now started to appreciate the sweet, intimate time that I get with the Lord in the midst of a fear. Because I know mm -hmm. what helps me is when I just talk to him throughout it. I mean, yeah. I take off and I immediately, mm -hmm. I just, I just sit there and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I allow him to just hold me in his arms. And I just talk to him about what I'm struggling with. And I actually mm -hmm. thank him. I'll thank him for being with me and holding me and keeping me mm -hmm. safe in those moments and just allowing me an opportunity to rely on him and to be dependent on him. So I think prayer yeah. is huge and it's just, and just conversation. I think sometimes we confuse this. We want to make this too complicated and feel like we have to have it super structured. Um, if we're just talking to God in the shower um, mm -hmm. or in the carpool line or wherever you might be, um, maybe it's mm -hmm. just praying when you're in the grocery store over, you know, a choice. Some, it's the little things even that, you know, we mm -hmm. find that, that we struggle with or where Satan wants to show up everywhere to, to throw us off course. So right. it's just a habit. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a daily practice. Like you're saying, we, it's just not a one and done. Oh, I, I did it on Monday. It's, it's going to take me through the week. You know, no, right. we need it yeah. every single day. Yeah. And I think too, taking things one day at a time is key too. And, you know, that's trusting God when we worry is key because, I mean, when we, and, and not to say that we can't plan, but, um, you know, when we are looking forward to the future too much, we're kind of, mm -hmm. ta we're taking off the focus off mm -hmm. of God and it makes us not be able to uh, trust them as, right. as much. But if we just look at, okay, trusting God for today, there's a scripture verse on that, you know, tomorrow's got its own troubles. And it's like, 
It's in there right. for a reason, right? Yep. Right. And so just trusting God with your every day and that today and not looking too far into the future uh, because that just automatically stirs up these what ifs and those what ifs are dangerous those are those worry yeah. triggers and uh so good so is there anything that we did not cover that you would like to share and then we can just lead right into a takeaway you know the big one for me i, I love this the second half of the book is when i really open up all the possibilities that we have in this freedom when we when we are when we make the choice to to lock arms with god and allow him to um to learn more about him and infuse the truths into our life and rely on him and re when we release this I i've seen my life open up in such beautiful ways uh, when i stopped avoiding things because of fear and when i stopped living anxiously mm -hmm. i was able to walk in a purpose that I didn't see before because I was afraid to step out and step and step into wh whatever he wanted me to do in, tr in trusting him. Yeah. And there's so much blessing beyond our worries and our fears. And mm -hmm. when we just allow that, I just think that's when life opened up for me, when I allowed mm -hmm. myself to, to release all of this, mm -hmm. um, even just to a degree, I still have a ways to go. And I, this is an, an ever, this is a process, but mm -hmm. the more I have learned to trust God and, and really soak in the truths of his love and of his power, it's allowed me to do things I never would have done before, go places I hadn't gone and just mm -hmm. experience a joy in life that I didn't experience before. So yeah. Um, yeah. I just I really love, like I mentioned, that second half of the book, I really open up what that looks like, what mm -hmm. that what that joy can look like for each person, what the what the peace mm -hmm. looks like. And I know how much we're missing and we would we all long for peace mm -hmm. and purpose and joy. And there's just so much of that available when we really um, do the work to dig in and um, to, to to with with God to overcome. Yeah, this. it's freeing. We get mm -hmm. freedom from it. And yes. like you said, our lives become more fulfilled because we're doing what he's called us to do and fear you, you just have to face it and just yep. march through it yeah. and um and the more you do it the less it becomes a power over you because yeah. i feel like you're showing the enemy look your tactics aren't working anymore i'm doing it anyway and then it dissipates and it starts to dilute its hold on you. Yeah. And so along with the word and prayer and just doing it regardless and having that confidence and uh, that God has already put in us and yeah. he's already equipped us and we just have to keep that narrative going on mm -hmm. over and over again in our minds until right. You know, we're finally, like you're saying, experiencing it, living it mm -hmm. out and actually believing our belief, like you're saying. So, yes. all right, let's I always love to conclude with a takeaway, something the listener can ponder on or take action in. And where can people buy your awesome book? You know, I want everyone, I want people to understand in this because you hear all this stuff. It sounds great. You know, we have worries and fears, and I would love to, get, you know, have some make some progress here. And I think people are, are skeptical, but I will say it's a choice. You know, it really is a choice to um, to do the work. Like you said, it's not it's not easy. But with God, what I want people to understand and know is. God has conquered this because he has conquered the enemy. What we're dealing here, what we're dealing with here is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And we can conquer that because God has already conquered the enemy. That's and right. we, we can conquer all fear and our worry because of this victory that has already been claimed. And it's mm -hmm. ours for the taking. And God wants that for us. I love 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. And so I just want people to, to know that there is hope. If there's hope yeah. for me, there's hope for you, there's hope for all of us to overcome not only our fear and worry, but whatever it is that we're struggling with, God doesn't want to just leave us that way. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, where can everybody contact you oh, yes. and get that book? Yeah, so, okay, I hang out on social media. Instagram's my fave. And mm -hmm. um, you can find me there, um, Carrie Eichberger, and my 
website, carrieikeberger.com. You can contact me, email me. Actually, is me behind the email, so you can reach out. I love to pray for others and just connect with um, with people all over the all over the world and in the country. And uh, my that book's on Amazon right now, and you can it's it'll be it's available for pre order. It'll be available um, for release September twelfth. And um, yeah, I'm excited for yeah. you to dig in and and yeah. learn more. Such a great book. Well, thank you, Carrie. And you are such an inspiration on Instagram with your encouraging reels and uh-huh. how much you just pour out into others. And I, that takes time, but it also takes a lot of that quiet time with the Lord to um, what you get in the private to take it out to the public. And uh, I know we all need it. We all need to pass through that on our feed and hear uh, a word of truth with uh, such a world that's so dark at times. So uh, I just love what you're doing and I'm grateful for you. And thank you for coming on here. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening today, and I trust that God has encouraged you through this story. Did you know this podcast is on YouTube? Hop on there and subscribe, and you can see a live recording of each episode. And for more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com. That's J-A-Y-M-E elizabeth.com. And let's connect beyond this podcast by going to my Instagram handle, Jamie Elizabeth, She Speaks Life, or Facebook. Until next time, my friend, I hope God reveals himself through your own life story.